perspective on disease is that they are the result of an abnormality in a single gene. However, in reality, diseases are the product of perturbations in complex interconnected cellular components, like genes, RNA, and DNA. Given this, in order to deepen our understanding of disease etiology, a systems biology approach is needed. More specifically, network medicine is an emerging field that uses the tools of network science to improve treatment, prevention, and diagnosis of diseases. The human interactome is a set of all molecular interactions in a cell at the level of genes, RNA, and proteins. However, the human interactome is not fully complete. The status of it, it contains currently an incomplete protein interactome, showing all of the different protein-protein interactions in a cell. It also contains uh, causal links between diseases and genes. So seen here, two uh, genes on this network are connected if they are both implicated in the same disease. As you can see, the genes form these highly connected clusters or disease modules on the network. So what are the implications of the human interactome? If complete, if we had a complete uh, human interactome, we could use it to identify new disease genes, determine optimal therapeutic targets, and elucidate relationships between seemingly distinct disease types. However, the current human interactome is thoroughly incomplete. It contains networks at the gene and protein level, but it is missing uh, networks at the RNA level. So why are RNA to disease networks important? Well, for starters, uh, unlike the incomplete protein interactome, RNA networks are more comprehensive owing to the availability of RNA sequence information. Non-coding RNAs in particular, such as microRNAs, account for much of the information encoded in the human genome. MicroRNAs, a type of non-coding RNA, are essential in protein expression through, through post-transcriptional regulation and RNA silencing. Given the importance of microRNAs in disease, the objective of this research was to incorporate microRNA disease network into the human interactome. To do this, we created a network-based microRNA to disease model and this was in order to examine clustering of microRNAs in terms of diseases, with the goal of identifying putative microRNAs as biomarkers and therapeutics. So here's how we did it. Because there are no experimentally validated direct microRNA to disease connections, we had to predict these associations. To do so, we used four massive data sets, MIRDIP, OMIM, GWAS, and DEG. From these data sets, two bipartite networks were created, microRNA to gene and gene to disease. A bipartite network is one that contains two different types of nodes. These two bipartite networks were aligned along their set of shared genes. And this was in order to form a tripartite network of microRNA to gene to disease. Next, I simplified this tripartite network to a to the uh, final desired microRNA disease network using statistical inference. To do this, what I did was for every microRNA and disease node, I compared the probability of these being connected if the network was random compared to the actual number of shared nodes that it had in the network. And I used these values in order to compute a z-score. I assigned all microRNA to disease edges as the z-score and eliminated all edges with a z-score less than three. Now, in order to gain more insights from this microRNA disease bipartite network, I created two projections. In the disease, uh, disease network projection, two diseases are connected if they're targeted by the same microRNA. In the microRNA projection, two microRNAs are connected if they both target the same disease. Next, uh, to further analyze these network projections and gain more insights, I looked at several metrics. These include diameter, density, clustering coefficient, and modularity. To visualize the networks, I used Gephi software. So now let's move on to the results uh, of the mi microRNA bipartite disease network. So in order to gain a sense of clustering, which is important because it tells us what the most important microRNA disease modules are, I calculated edge weight and degree distributions. Now in the degree distribution, you can see that the uh, distribution follows the power law. And in network science, this means that the network is a scale-free network. 
What this means is that the network will be characterized by distinctive clustering, which in turn will tell us microRNA disease modules. If we look at the edge weight distribution, you can see that there is a small minority of edges with a very high weight, and this indicates a strong microRNA to disease association. Now, if we look at, uh, similar to what we saw quantitatively, we can also see visually in this Gephi image of a disease-disease projection in microRNA space. The different colors correspond to modularity classes as determined by a modularity algorithm. As you can see, there is very distinctive clustering in this network. And more importantly, each of these disease, each of these uh, modules on the network correspond to individual diseases. For example, cardiovascular diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, and thyroid diseases. In stark contrast to the disease projection in microRNA space, in gene space, the disease projection has far less clustering and is far more homogeneous. The microRNA microRNA projection also has far less distinctive clustering than the disease projection. And what this shows is that many microRNAs target a wide range of diseases, causing microRNAs to have overlap in the diseases that they target. This graph here, or this table here, uh, summarizes some of the main metrics of the different projections I was looking at. The two main takeaways from this table is first, uh, modularity. So as you can see, the disease projection in microRNA space had the highest modularity and was able to be divided most easily into sub-networks. In contrast, the disease projection in gene space had the lowest modularity. So also supported, uh, in following along this trend, is the clustering coefficient. As you can see here, it is very high, whereas in the microRNA projection, it's much lower, and that shows that there was less clustering in that network. So going along with this trend of specificity uh, in the disease projection of microRNA space, if you look here, you can see plotted here is the, uh, is the correlation between the microRNA disease strength versus the degree. And you can classify the microRNAs into two groups, disease specific, meaning they target a few diseases with high specificity, versus pleiotropic, targeting multiple different diseases weekly. Seen here are the top eight microRNAs identified by our model as being pleiotropic, and seven microRNAs identified as being disease-specific. So to further examine these disease-specific microRNAs as they are of significance as potential biomarkers and therapeutics, four of these microRNAs have been validated in prior literature as being potential biomarkers and therapeutics, experimentally confirmed to be linked to diseases like Huntington's, prostate and liver cancer, hypertension, and esophageal cancer. More importantly, our model was able to identify two new putative biomarkers and therapeutics. MicroRNA 523 was identified as being uh, correlated to adrenal diseases, 937, in dermatological and ophthalmological diseases. MicroRNA 339 was identified as being linked to congenital neurological diseases. And this is interesting because in prior literature, 339 has only been examined as a potential uh, target for cancers. So this research has identified a new possible application for this microRNA. To conclude, we have created a microRNA disease network to incorporate and make a more comprehensive human interactome. When diseases are plotted in microRNA space, there are more distinct disease modules formed. Furthermore, our model has identified eight possible pleiotropic microRNAs that are likely master gene regulators and should be further investigated to better understand cellular function. Our model has also identified seven disease-specific microRNAs, four of which have been validated in prior literature, two of which are new targets, and a third was identified as for a new disease application. So what are the importance of these results? Um, this research has shown the importance of including microRNAs into the human interactome. This uh, model has created a method of classifying microRNAs as either pleiotropic and disease-specific, and identifying potential microRNA drug targets, both new microRNA drug targets as well as new applications for existing microRNA targets. Now, this research will enhance the drug discovery process by allowing uh, microRNA targets to reach the consumer market quicker and to enable um, more effective and safer therapeutics. 
future research will experimentally validate the identified microRNA targets as well as continue expanding the network. Uh, these are my acknowledgments. I would especially like to thank my mentors, Brennan Klein and Mark Santolini at the Network Science Institute and the Chang Division of Network Medicine, as well as RSI, CEE, and MIT, and my sponsors. Open the floor to questions from the judges. What's the microRNA data that you're correlating? Is it expression data or sequence data? Uh, so the data that I'm looking at is the associations between microRNAs and diseases. But what about the microRNAs? Is there expression or their sequence? Are you looking at sequence variation? Um, no, I'm not. Expression of the microRNAs. Uh, neither. The way that the model works is. Um, Researchers have created mathematical models that looks at the sequence of microRNAs and is able to predict what genes they will be targeting. Um, and that, those, those, that list of associations is the data that I'm working with. Yes. When you have this sort of data type project where you end up with a lot of possibilities to, to examine, um, you often need some sort of way of getting some focus as to which might be the important ones to look at first. So here you, you got sort of a manageable number of, of six or seven, but if you're using this on you know, more and better data or trying to expand this approach, you might find like a hundred different microRNAs. Is there any sense of like confidence or, or you know or some way of ranking the outcomes? So uh Oh, uh, sorry. The question was if there is a way to rank uh, the confidence in which we are sure that the microRNA is linked to that disease. Um, so the way we did that was by using this z-score. Uh, so what we did was we looked at the probability that the uh, microRNA and the disease would have a number of shared nodes if the network was random and compared it to the actual number of shared genes that these two nodes had. Um, and so this enables us to determine whether or not this microRNA to disease uh, connection, how significant it is. Um, and so that's what the z-score represents. So that would be one metric of uh, determining or of, of ranking basically these microRNA to disease connections. And it's actually this z-score that we used in the model in order to, de to create that list of seven disease specific microRNAs. Is it a traditional method uh, like standards or you invented it? Comparing to the random case. Is it the, the, the traditional method to do that, or it's your invention? Uh, uh, the question was whether this method of calculating z-scores is traditional or a novel method. Uh, it's a fairly commonly used method in the field of network science, using this hypergeometric distribution in order to uh, assign edge weights to networks. I believe when you talked to this slide, you mentioned something about uh, discarding all data with a z-score less than three. How is that threshold determined? Uh, so that threshold, w or the, sorry, the question was uh, how I determined what the threshold for the network was, a z-score of three in this case. Um, and that's typically what's used in the field. Uh, a z-score of three is typically considered to, or a z-score above three is typically considered to be significant. And so that's why I eliminated ones with a z-score less than three. Is there a reason why greater than three? From goes from it has to, uh, if it has a z-score of three, that means that that connection is three standard deviations above the mean and is usually considered to be um, statistically significant in that case. It assumes that you have somewhere else, so it's the usual right? Yes. Um, yeah, on the very left. Or, yeah. Sure. Uh, can you go back to your, your power, power law distribution? So I'm trying to understand how this graph, which basically says you have a scale for the relationship between a uh, number of mRNAs activated in a certain disease expression, um, and your results would say that some of them uh, are, I guess, called pleiotropic. They, they, they're active on a lot of different disease mechanisms, and some of them 
uh, are only specific to one kind of disease. Uh, so how, how does that relate to what you have here? So uh, the uh, sorry. So the question was how the uh, attribute of it being a scale-free network that we see in the degree distribution relates to the properties that I found of, uh, of disease-specific microRNAs versus pleiotropic microRNAs. Uh, okay. So uh, a scale-free network is characterized by uh, hubs. So there are certain microRNAs that are in the center of the network. And these have a very large degree and are connected to hundreds or even thousands of other nodes. Um, and so those microRNAs are the pleiotropic microRNAs that I identified. Then in a scale-free network, you also have the nodes that are more on the edges. And these are in small clusters on the edges of the network. Um, and they have much smaller degrees. And so those network, uh, those um, nodes in the scale-free network correspond to the disease-specific microRNAs that I identified. So uh, to summarize, basically, a scale-free network is characterized by these very large hub nodes that are connected to many microRNA or to many other nodes, um, and also by smaller clusters that are smaller hubs. And those are the disease-specific microRNAs. So I guess my question then is so that the, the, the exponent that you derive from this kind of power law, how the information does that give you about the relationship between the pleiotropic miRNAs and the ones that are very disease specific? Uh, so I did not derive an exponent uh, from this, but that would probably require further research to look at, to derive the exponent from the power law distribution seen here and determine what information that provides. Any other questions from the judges? Um, we might have time for one question from the audience, if anyone has a question. All right, thank you.